So, it turns out that um, I didn't really get enough gear, really, from um, Dread Dungeon to make a dedicated, uh, like, upgrading gear sorting video. So, I did that off screen, um, the few pieces that were worth equipping. And, um, yeah, I'll just go over them quickly now. Um, so for my auras, the only nothing changed other than I had this weapon. I think I got it from um, Arcane Library as uh, you know a random map reward weapon. So I put that on. Um, I also did some off-screen leveling just to get some of my more important heroes up to seventy-eight, so they can actually equip the the transcendent pieces we're going to be dropping. Um, Let's see, there's the Eevee, nothing changed. There's the Apprentice. Uh, what I did is I realized the set, this was the set that was on my Hermit, and with a couple of trans pieces that dropped, it's actually better better for my um, Apprentice than it is the Hermit. So I swapped the sets over. Here they are. Pretty decent pieces, went ahead and upgraded those. And then this is the set on my hermit. He got most of the supreme, uh, the transcendent pieces. I haven't upgraded any of them, and I'm not going to. For now, at least. And summoner unchanged, huntress unchanged, and I went ahead and equipped that genie we got from um, Arcane Library as well, since my Jester is level 74 now. Alright, it's time for Campaign King's Game. Campaign so that we, you know, if you were on a fresh account, this would unlock the survival. So I'm just going to do pretty standard LTs, DSTs. Going to throw in a couple of Hermit Towers as well. I'm thinking Golems to make sure my stuff doesn't die. And yeah, we'll see after that. My usual thought process is just Golems to make the build not fall over and then Whatever, I need another aura stack over here. Um, and then whatever else after that, basically. Do I want to build down here? No, I don't think... Oh. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Going to do that like that. And then change the top, I think. Because... Do I want to change it there? I think I'll leave it, actually. Leave that how it is, and then for the bottom here yeah, we're just going to do a golem and a seed bomb tower. That should be fine, and then all the other towers I'll place at the top. <clears throat> I'm going to need a uh, uh, we'll leave it till last, actually. Let's see, I'll pick up the rest of the chests. It's these two down here. Oh, that's awkward. I don't think there's any way to get back up there.
Whoa. Wasn't looking where I was going. So I believe, yeah, you can just jump straight off here and fall all the way down to that chest. Probably should have just G'd. Instead of waiting for the timer to go down. Oh well. I placed one one LT too many. Gonna wanna put a golem over here. Yeah, so this map is uh, pretty tedious. It's uh, sort of a combination of the map being very big and the enemies not being very fast. But we got to do it to get to the survival, so no way around it. Eh, it's not that bad. I don't know. I'm not like... I'm still not that... Uh, how do I want to word this? Like, I remember when it was pretty standard for campaign maps to just be 20 minutes. That was like, that would be your standard Akatiti run or Winter Wonderland run. So for a map to not be like extremely fast isn't that big of a deal for me. I can put up with like a 20 minute campaign map. Okay, and we have one DU left over, so... If, if for some reason we need a Reflect, I'll, I can use it for that. This map can also be a decent place to get your first um, Lupine Bow from. Uh, if you, you know, uh, once you completed Halloween Spooktacular, uh, unlock the Lupine Bow to drop as a core drop. It can drop from here. And it's like, a, you know, if this is the route you're taking and you're going to be on this map, like on the survival, you can do a couple of early waves on a Huntress and uh, get one to drop pretty quickly. And then if it drops out of a chest, it has a pretty good chance of being uh, quite good as well. But I don't think I'm going to do that. That's... I, I, like, first of all, I don't think it's worth showing as a video by itself. Like, you just have to do Halloween Spooktacular on, um, on Insane, which is a ridiculously easy map. I don't think there's any reason to show it off, and I don't think I'm I don't think I'm going to use uh, Jester for upgrading primarily. Like when I make a dedicated up upgrader character, I'm just gonna make it my um, adept. So I won't even bother using the Lupine bow anyway. Yeah, King's Game has these uh, pretty unique feature. It has these shining tiles that, uh, well, if you uh, walk over them, you get a wacky effect. Whoa. Slow down time. Just what I want. Ooh, 
Yeah, it can range between completely useless or negative effects to really good positive effects, like that one we just got there, which was defense units increased. It gives you gives you 10 more DU. The other really good one you can get is all defenses upgraded, and it upgrades them to three stars, which uh, is very nice on survival, if you get that one. This map also doesn't have a terrible um, Huntress weapon on it either. It can make, at least my idea is that it can make for a, a decent starter EV weapon. It's called the Pawn Shot and it has like really high damage per upgrade, which is what you want for a DPS EV for the Proton Charge. So, I mean, later on, this could be somewhere we farm on campaign for to get, like, a, just an ultimate pawn shot or something. Just so we actually have a somewhat usable weapon once we, you know, get to that point of making a DPS EV. Because the only other options that I'm really aware of is, uh, what's it called? It's the Huntress weapon from Buccaneer Bay. The mobile launcher? No. The ha it's like a harpoon gun thing. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it's called. Um, but there's that. That also has really high damage per upgrade. I, I don't know if it's more than a pawn shot. But um, Buccaneer Bay is harder than this anyway, so... Even if it is slightly better, I would probably do this map just because it's so easy. Um, and the other two options are obviously Ember Scepter, which is the best, and we probably won't be doing Ember Mount for a decent while. Um, I would ideally want to have, you know, a DPS EV before even attempting Ember Mount. And the other option is a Honey Gun, which you get from Infested Ruins, which is also a pretty difficult map. So I'm thinking at some point later on down the line we try and get a pawn shot. I think I will just complete this map on four huntresses. There is a small chance that we get something. I believe the rates on the, the drop rates for ultimate pawn shot isn't that bad either. Not compared with the rest of the items from this map anyway. The rest of the items have pretty abysmal alt rate. But I mean, if you want to, uh, it's a pretty bad idea. I'm not, I was going to say, if you want to like try and get a decent upgrade for your builders weapon wise, it, you could get one from this map, but no, I, I don't recommend that. We're going to be doing moon base soon and that's a far better map. And then shortly after moon base, there's Tinkerer's Lab, which is 
also a really good option for weapons. So yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't hang around doing this map on campaign. Just doing it to uh, start running survival and start swimming in transcendent gear, basically. Because this map does drop a lot of transcendent gear. I ran this map a bunch on my main account to try and get a good plus plus one shot. I never ended up getting it. I just got a an alt plus one. I got uh, a bit bored. At least you can kind of keep yourself busy by running on the tiles. There's a little route or a, a route here that you can take that um, basically you never have to wait for them to come off cooldown. Ooh, jump height. Whee! It's funny when you get uh, jump height increased and up, up and away and you jump right at the apex of where you get thrown up you can get uh, you can get pretty high up in this map with that combo like if you get that and then jump height oh some enemies have been killed yes just what i needed So I think we'll make this episode extra long and I'll fit in the survival build I'm going to be doing after the campaign, after this campaign run, we'll just uh, jump straight into survival and I'll set up the build, spend sort of, uh... oh, there's a lupine bow. Yeah, I mean. Wait, I didn't check. <laughs> I checked everything but the most important thing you're looking for on those, which is it has, um, you want them to not have electric damage as the secondary damage type because by default they do electric damage and you want two different damage types, right? If you're, because you're, you're not going to be doing any damage to lightning, lightning immune monsters. It's a little bit important. It's actually not completely necessary, but like you could use one that only does electric damage. Just uh, you'd run into situations, annoying situations like. Uh, okay, I should stop running on these. Uh, I'll do it anyway. Just because it was right there.
Uh, yeah, what was I saying? Something about... I was talking about survival. Yeah, I'll set up a survival build. Do a couple of waves and then probably just... Cut to the end of the survival, similar to what I did with, um... Dread Dungeon. The Dread... The Dread Dungeon episode. Skip to the end, I'll show off the last wave, or maybe we even lose, I'm not sure. We might take an L. And then, um... We will have a lot... We will have a, enough items to make a dedicated sorting and upgrading video out of, um... Out of a couple of survival runs of this. I do plan on doing more than one before I do the next episode, because I really want to make sure that, you know, I can upgrade all my characters. So I'm thinking probably three runs I'll do, three survival runs, and then we'll see what, what the situation's looking like. We can do a sorting video, and then... Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do after that. Probably... Because the main goal of what I'm trying to do is... Um, get a free-range chicken. Because that's gonna, that's gonna really jumpstart our DPS monk. And having a DPS monk, oh, it's also going to get us a weapon for our um, power booster, which is the chicken baller. So the way I like to do, or get to that point, get to having a free range chicken and a chicken baller, is getting a ultimate uh, fusion rift, it does a lot of damage basically and a harpoon pet which is uh, a really nice pet for Spring Valley which is the map you get um, the chicken baller and the eggs from for the free range and the way we go about that is doing moon base on nightmare and uh, survival magus citadel is that what it's called? I, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, that's also a good place to get guardians. Um, if you hadn't got any by this point, then you can get some from um, Mega Citadel Survival. So the plan is to... I suppose, yeah, the plan after this is to do Moon Base a bunch on Nightmare to get a good Fusion Rift. Or it doesn't even have to be good. Because we're going to be doing Spring Valley on Insane, the Fusion Rift doesn't even have to be good. It just has to be... I, well, it doesn't have to be ultimate either. It's just I want... to have a good DPS weapon on my EV... Or, uh, sorry, on my Jester anyway. So I might as well spend some time there to farm up an ultimate Fusion Rift. Um, and then after we've done moon base, that's also a nice, what am I doing? Huntresses. Um, that's also a nice place in general just to get some weapon upgrades. Probably I'll get a staff upgrade for my adept, my builder adept. And then, yeah, after Nightmare Moon Base, probably, well, not probably, we'll do um, Mega Citadel on Insane Survival. We do it on Insane just to be able to get a, um, a Harpoon Pet, since that doesn't have to be, like, really good either. Just has to be, because Harpoons are... Um, another item that's locked to a specific quality it's it's it'll always be transcendent and it'll always have 200 upgrades so it's pretty hard to get a bad one 
pretty much anything we, we get will be a usable harpoon. And then, yeah, the idea is do Spring Valley, uh, I believe. Oh, I can't remember. I think you only get one egg per run. And you need ten for... Do you need ten? Yeah, I think you need ten to make the free range. And you get one egg per run. Actually, you know what? It's been like too long since I've run that map, I actually can't remember, so I'm not gonna say anything that might be incorrect. We'll just find out when we get to it. But yeah, we run that. Get a free range. That's also another item that's uh, specifically locked to a um, quality, so it's also very hard to get a bad well, I wouldn't say it's a very hard to get a bad free range, but it, it's possible to get a bad one. But it's also not that hard to get a good one either. So, ideally, we get a really good free range the first time we get enough eggs to make it. And then that just... It basically enables us to do a ton of maps that require a DPS character. So we'll be able to do maps with our DPS monk. Maps with bosses. Free range chicken is a ridiculously good DPS pet. It's something you can use in the end game for like almost any situation. It shoots, I believe, four projectiles that each do a different elemental damage type, so it does generic, poison, fire, and lightning. And it has some splash damage. The only thing it's lacking is the projectile speed on it is not that good. And the range on it isn't that good either. But everything else is really good. It has really high damage, and hits all three elemental types, and has a little bit of splash damage. So it's really nice. Basically don't need to use any other pet for like 80% of the DPS content in the game. Yeah, so this one would be a, a decent one to use if you were going to use one. Has fire damage as the secondary stat. Has good AB2. Has good reload. I'll just pick it up anyway just in case I decide to use one. I don't think I will, but... Oh, wow. Okay, I, I, I did not expect that. <laughs> and we got some some bows as rewards as well. That's funny. Okay. Well, that's, that's quite nice. I mean, we could use that on our Huntress, I suppose. Our Builder Huntress. Since we don't care about damage, we're not using any damaging... Oh, too bad this one has negative AB2. We'll keep that just in case. My Huntress isn't high enough level yet to even use that, so... Let's see. So if, if we're going to be using this on an Eevee, we don't actually care about any of these stats like shots per second or projectile speed because we'll just be using it for um, the proton charge. So we can just dump everything into base damage. And wow, I spent all my mana on that. Yikes. So it hits 173k base damage, which is very usable for a... as a starter EV weapon. <laughs> wow, okay, I'm glad I uh, did that with four Huntresses. Damn. I did not expect that. Right. Next up 
is survival. Also, I need to put this point in. Right, so let's get into a survival run. Took long enough on the campaign. Starting on wave eight, we're gonna do mix mode. I believe mix mode is the right play for King's game. So let's see, what did I want to do for this? Start down here. Do a full aura stack. We'll do a f another full aura stack over here. Now this top area, I believe, gets the most... Um, what's the right term? Most traffic. So I think we want to defend up here. This is just a really classic King's Game setup. You probably see a lot of builds that use this placement. It's always satisfying building from like the corners of the uh, tiles. So for here, I'm going to build on this tile back here, because it won't get, um, the LTs that I place here won't get any aggro drawn to them. I will be using minions in this build. First time that I feel like I have to use minions. Because this survival, at this point in the game, can be pretty rough. We don't exactly have, like, insane stats right now, obviously, so... Gonna have to do something pretty robust to hold up. And minions is the, the answer to that. Um... Oh, yeah, I need to reflect beams down here. So we'll see what the DU looks like. I think, yeah, I should put some reflect beams here. Something like that. And I know I want to put gas traps on the top here. Let's see. Where does my aura... Uh, they're on an unupgraded buff beam right now, so... Okay, so what I'm going to do is unequip all my gear. Oh, you still get... How big are these? I think... Yeah, that's still closer than what it was before, obviously, I think. That's also the first time I've ever used unequip all gear, by the way. So other than this situ- oh, that's the wrong trap. Other than this situation, I have no idea what else you would use it for. Then we're going to re-equip all our gear. And let's see. Probably want to get all our LTs down first. Let's get this chest, these two chests down here. Sag was not able to make the jump.
We have one D left, so I think I think I'll place a reflect beam up here. Just cause I know that this side here can take some take a beating from goblin copters. There's a goblin copter that flies over here. He always like drops the uh, the jeez my brain. He drops the ogre on top of that um, lamp. Uh, right. We're gonna get some minions down. It's gonna have to just be uh, some archers for now. Now, because we have the LT stack on the bottom here, I don't feel a need to really defend uh, or put gas traps down here. That's what I was getting at. Just get those gas traps healed. How much did that heal them? 50. Wait, is that? Yeah, 50. Okay. So yeah, unfortunately, we won't be using making use out of um, any hermit towers in this build. Just because I really can't find a good impl implementation. I can't think of anything that would be, like, that beneficial. Web walls, there's not really much point because we're going to be using minions. Um, seed bomb towers, no, not really. Since we're using minions, so there's really not that much point. Well, I suppose we could, the only applicable, yeah, no, I can't think of anything. There's no point using a golem again, because we're using minions and there's going to be, those towers won't be taking aggro anyway, so there's no reason to have like a golem to keep them alive. And the Spore Tower, I also don't think is going to be that useful. Oh my god. Okay, let's just snipe that. Uh... Kobold. Oh my god. Actually... Hmm... I did have a... One idea. Nah. I'm not gonna bother. I don't think it would work. Okay, I know I specifically set up these keybinds, but apparently I'm not used to them. A little tip for building minions is um, you can build different types of minion minions at the same time. So like uh, you can build a spider, mage, an archer like all in a sequence. So you, you don't have to like you know if you want to place say if you want to place two spiders, you have to wait for the first one. Otherwise, the when you try and build another spider, it will cancel it. So you can just do like. Archer, Spider, and Mage all at the same time. That's a lot faster. Okay. Let's 
do those on top of each other. Do I have enough MU for this? I think I can only put... Oh, there was only two there anyway. Hang on. That was a mistake. Let's get some more mana. Yeah, I'm, f I'm capped on MU. Hmm. I know what I'll do. We don't need as much down here, so... We can just do two... Four archers total. Something like that. Looks good to me. Let's get on the Jester and start upgrading. So this is the pretty standard uh, King's Game build. Not, um, not breaking any uh, records here with this, but it's sort of tried and true. You, you know it's going to work. I'm just, uh, well, I'm starting on a, the default starting wave because that's what it would be if you were on a fresh account anyway. Plus, I kind of need the extra waves to upgrade. Again, I could use that loop one bow we dropped, but I'm going to be stubborn. I'm going to be stubborn and wait until we get a Tinkerer's... Uh, Proto staff, which is what um, it's the staff we're going to be using on um, on our upgrade uh, adept. But if you already have the waves for this unlocked, and it's going to be the wave that I'm going to start on after this first run, um, wave eighteen. So if you can start on that wave. Definitely start on that wave. There's that goblin copter I was talking about. He can be uh, pretty pesky. Okay, well, I'm going to get everything upgraded. You know what? Maybe it'd be better just to run on the run the tiles to um to get the everything is upgraded tile. I might just do that. But yeah, I'm going to cut it here and I'll be back at the end of the run. So, I just got uh Defense units increased. Uh, so that's 
plus 10 DU, and I would probably use that on, like, one Deadly Striker or something. Just because that... If that ogre that gets stuck on the lamp that I was talking about, or the goblin copter, if either of those two are electric resistant, it can slow down the waves. Like sometimes the only mob that can be left is the ogre on top of the lamp that's electric resistant. So just having a DST down there, like pointed in this general direction, um, can help can help with that. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, just thought I'd uh, cut in with that bit of information. Yep. Uh, this map is uh, absolutely flawless. The reign of transcendence has begun. Surprising no one, a lot of them dropped out of uh, chests. Okay, we're back, and it's the last wave. Not had any issues whatsoever. I placed that DST like I said I would. Angled it so that it would catch the Dark Elf Warriors that got stuck there. And yeah, it's uh, been absolutely fine. Where the heck is that other trans that dropped there? So I just start the wave and then open the chests mid-wave. Ooh, nice. Uh, well, that wasn't very nice. I keep forgetting that this summoner does not have any resistances uh, leveled up. Looks like that mage is getting kind of low. Let's see if we can throw in a flash shield real quick. Oh no. Hmm. Maybe we lose on the last wave. How much tower stats do I have on this character? A lot less HP. It's interesting how you don't get the notification for um, minions dying. Oh, yeah, I need to heal over that. Wow, that, my flash shield does, like, nothing, huh? I think as long as I keep the minions over here alive. Or have they been dying as well? I can't even tell if there's a mage alive. No, doesn't look like it. Ow. Hmm. Yeah, looks like... well... Let me throw in another flash shield here. Because as long as we keep some minions alive down here... That'll keep the aggro of the ogres away from the core. So we should be good.
Oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Didn't need to complete the map anyway, so... My god. Two hours total time, huh? Yikes. Well... Got to the last wave at least, which is perfectly fine, like I said. No reason... No... Massive benefit to completing the map. But, um... We have... Oh yeah, I forgot to add in extra characters for the dice. But we have a lot of gear to look through. So, yeah. Shame I didn't get to pick up that trans or the Supreme in the uh, on the last wave there. But um, I'm actually going to do more runs of this. And I'll be back for a... Uh, inventory management and uh upgrade character video so yeah